Jesus Christ said, if you come after me, he says, deny yourself. A growing Christian is a follower of Christ. The degree of following determines the lack of spiritual growth. So someone says, how does God prepare me for the next level? Listen to me. God has no problem in taking the next level. But God is saying, before I take you to the next level, I have to prepare you for the next level. Listen to me. There is a prepared place for you, but God has to prepare you for the prepared place. Let you become what? Let you become a nuisance in your prepared place. The prodigal son had this breakthrough and messed it up. Many people, if God blesses them the way they are, they will mess up their breakthrough. They will mess up their marriage. They will mess up their finances. They will mess up the job. They will mess up the name of Christ. So what God does is that before you get there, like Israel, he takes you through a journey. And in that journey, he builds into you patience. He builds into you maturity. He builds into you some strength. He builds into you self-discipline. He builds into you some stamina. Because there's something you have to get into. There's something you have to move into. The question is this. This is what God wants to do in your life. Are you opening up for God or you are busy resisting the Spirit of God and say no and say no and God says I want to prepare you for your destiny. It's time for you to leave where you are. It's good to be here but there's a place you have to go to. Come up here and how God prepares you is this. He needs to build and cook you from the inside. Oh, glory to God. (sighs) So how does God grow us? The Bible says, how does God grow us? Because I just told you, the same thing in business. You you saw the Apple story. There's another story like Lego. The same thing with Lego. Lego, the toy company, the same thing. How did they grow? They had to streamline. Some of you are in business right now. And for you to grow, you need to learn the principle. You have to do less to do more. And how God draws you, he begins to empty you. You are too full. When you are too full, let me put it some other way. When you are not hungry for God, it's because you are full of other things. What can you be full of? (laughs) You can be full of the cares of life. You can be full of money. You can be full of yourself. You can be full of pressure. You can be full of pleasure. You can be full of, you know, all those things that people are chasing after. You can be full of just the rat race. You can just focus. Let me show you what this looks like. What does it mean to be full? Look at my table. This table is nice. This is Fanta. Let me show you this Fanta. Wow, this is nice. Mm, this is nice. So if, if you're in church having Fanta, you can have one in your home also. But guess what? Look at this glass is going to be Fanta full soon. Nice, Fanta full. This is water. This is water is God, Holy Spirit, symbol of water. Guess what? When I try to put the water inside, I don't know if you can see through the camera, what happens? It begins to overflow. Why can't the water stay? Because the glass is full. The reason why you don't, you're not hungry for God is you're full of other things. Your glass is full. Some of you are full of, of, of money, your, that desire for money. Some of you are just so full. Just, my family, my family, my family. Your political ambition has filled you. The desire, your entrepreneurship has filled you. Your desire for all the things has filled you. And God is saying that, hey, if you want me to come in there, make space for me. Make space for God. When you look at the person sitting out next to you, even if it's your wife in your sitting room or someone that is on the other side and say, hey, make room for God. Make room for God. There are many ladies that all they pray about is God, give me husband. Lord, give me husband. Lord, give me husband. If you don't give me husband. And some other guys, oh, I just want money. I just want money. I want... It, all those good things are good, but God is more than that. God is not a magician. God is not a magician. What God wants from you is to have a relationship, not to give you stuff. Giving you stuff is wonderful, but He wants a relationship with you. He says, if anyone will come, he's going to deny himself. Someone says, why is it important to grow? Because the truth is this, God is going to cook you. 
You want to go next level? God is going to cook you. And you must allow yourself to be cooked. Cook means God is going to prepare you. This is very powerful. This is really very powerful. How does he cook you? He's going to, he's going to what? The first thing you have to do is deny yourself. Someone says, okay. Because let me tell you something. A lot of people be like, I'm a Christian, but I'm not that deep. <laughs> Listen, it's amazing that human beings define different grades of Christianity. Listen to me. The same way there are no different grades of sin, there are no different grades of Christianity. You are either Christ's own or you are not Christ's own. Shocked? That's the truth. You know, I'm a Christian, but I'm not really into it. Yeah, I'm not a Christian, brother. <laughs> Listen, well, how do I know that? When you were bought, born again, you were bought by Christ. When you were bought by Christ, you are no longer your own. Your choice is no longer your own. You are bought with a price. You belong to God. So your choices are not your choices. So I said, why is it good to become a, a Christian? And, and this is what it means to become a disciple. Who is a disciple? A, fully follower, a full follower of Christ. This is what it means to be a disciple. Just imagine the other day I was invited to the presidency you know, in Nassau Rock, and there was some other, you know, presidents there. And you just say, oh, Pastor Brad, you really just come and say hello and give us some prayers. And as I went to the Nassau Rock, my assistant went with me, who is like my disciple. And as he went with me, you know, when I got there, of course, everybody knew that you were coming, oh, sa, 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 that kind of, you know, feedback. And guess what? Everybody just walking me, walking me, yes, sir, yes, sir. Then all of a sudden, my assistant that walks with me, everyone was saying, yes, sir, yes, sir, to him. The question is this, are they saying yes, sir, to him because of who he is or because of who he's following? They are saying yes, sir, not because of who he is, because of who he's following. When you are a disciple of Master Jesus, everywhere that he has access to, that he commands attention, that they say yes, sir, to him, you have access to it also. So when does open, it doesn't open just for him, it opens for you. You can also speak to things because you have the same access, you have the same authority. The reason why I can command virus to die and I can command witchcraft spirit to be expelled is because as the master has authority, he's given unto me. I'm not an empty disciple. The disciple carries not just the role, the responsibility, but the authority authority of the master so he says in my name cast out devils oh glory to god let me bring it a little backwards you know what jesus christ says see what the bible says he says jesus came back and before he left back finally to heaven he says all power in heaven and on earth is given unto me he said go therefore and make disciples what does that mean because i have all power go and make disciples that will have I would be able to use all the powers I have and they can use it in my name. Some of you want to see the power of God in your life. You want to see miracles happen in your business. You want to see some kind of dimensions to answer prayers. Where does it come from? He doesn't come by the charade and be like, oh, I'm born again. No, sir. He comes from a private work, a deep work, a personal work of being a total follower of Christ. Is it going to cost something? He's going to cost you something. There are friends you will not be able to hang around with. There are values you have to change. So I say, you know, I'm not used to church. You have to change that value. So I say, I'm not used to Bible study. You have to change that value. So I say, I'm not used to giving to God like in form of tithe and offering. You have to change that value because he's going to take some things. There are places you can go. You can just go and watch all those places where, you know, you have all those things that are immoral and all of that. Glory to God. And God is challenging. Listen to me. Today, God has challenged a lot of you because why? You've stayed in your Christian life, you've stayed in that Christian space for such a long time. Some of you have become lethargic, you've become backslidden, and it's time for the fire of the Holy Spirit to come upon your soul. It's time for the fire of the Holy Spirit to come upon your heart. It's time for that lukewarmness to go. It's time for that lethargy to go. It's time for you to be hot for the Lord and passionate for Jesus. It's time for you to get up in the midnight and say midnight prayers and take the Bible and the Bible comes alive and let the power of God flow through your being. Oh my God. How does God grow us? God grows us because growth is not a miracle. It's not. Growth is the effect of, the, of applying the right principles. How does God grow us? God grows us by pruning us. 
Timoth Paul says to Timothy, if a man purge himself, for you to grow, there must be pruning. For you to grow, there must be pruning. Look at Joseph. Look at Joseph. Joseph, God had plans for Joseph. The next level of Joseph was to become the prime minister. But when you become a prime minister, you can't talk too much. You're going to know state secret. You're going to know deep secret that you can't share. So how the God grow jo Joseph, he had to take him to experience where he had to shut up. Because Joseph was a dreamer that was talking too much. So the first thing that God did to him was he, he took him to a pit where there was nobody to talk to. Praise God. <laughs> he was busy growing him. Then when he left the pit, he took him to what? Potiphar's house as a slave. The slave talks, but his talk does not count. Then he, you know, because he's a slave, he's owned. He should not be saying nothing. Then he took him to a prison where he can talk, but his talk is behind bars. By the time he was done with the process, he had learned how to manage his mouth. Sometimes, it's not God holding the answers to your prayer back. It's just the fact that you are refusing to allow God to prepare you for the next level ahead of you. God wants that company to move from $10,000 to $100,000. God wants you to move from that $100 million to $2 billion per year. But God knows if I give you this thing, you will be wrecked. And God is saying, how can I begin to prepare you? And instead of allowing God to prepare you, begin to resist God. So why do people resist God? The reason why is this. Discipleship is going to cost you something. Why does it cost you something? Because the, the denial means change. Change means pain. It means pain. God is going to tell you, stop that. And that's what you love to do. God is going to tell you, give that. And you're like, God, give that. But that's what you want to hold on to. And it's going to cost you something. But what I've come to embrace is this. There's nothing that God tells me to do that's my disadvantage. Hallelujah. You know why? Because God is not selfish. The Bible says God is love. God is not selfish. God is love. So how do you grow? The first step in growing is this. Accept responsibility for your spiritual growth. You have to accept responsibility. Don't say, well, we know we're just at home. You know, what will I do right now? Listen, we can be at home, but God is not living in church. Accept responsibility for growth. Every morning during the meeting, Monday to Friday, I, I'm busy leading people in prayer at 6.30 a.m. Get up from bed and just begin to go. That's what it means to accept responsibility for growth. Get a good Bible and read the Bible. And what does that look like? Let me tell you something. A lot of you know what will help you grow spiritually. But you're not doing it. You know why? You just don't want to accept responsibility. A lot of you, what will help you grow spiritually right now is that if there's a relationship you are in that someone can hold you accountable and say, hey, have you prayed? Did you see Shinena yesterday? Did you kiss Laquita last week? You know, did you hope you didn't go to that porn site again? Hope you didn't do that the other day. When you, when you have those conversations, it will help you stay on track. But because you do not want to grow intentionally, you intentionally stay out of the conversation and indulge yourself with things like, you know, I, I watch online. No, sir. If you want to grow, you have to be accountable. The reason why is that it takes a disciple to make a disciple. People are not disciples by themselves. It takes a disciple to make a disciple. What Jesus told the disciples, he said, because I've discipled you, go and make other disciples. You can't just disciple yourself. You need to find people that disciple, that can disciple you also. And that's what I want to say to you. Anywhere you're watching from Abuja, Canada, London, London, anywhere, send an email and say, I need to find a place where I can be discipled because I know I'm not discipled right now. That's what it means. The second thing you have to do is this. Deny yourself. What does deny yourself mean? Restrain. Huh. It says Restrain. When self is denied, you flourish spiritually. A lack of restraint is an indicator of spiritual maturity, immaturity. You prioritizing yourself, what you want, what you desire over the things of God is an indicator of low spiritual maturity. The second thing is restraint. <laughs> What did Paul say? Paul says, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9, he said, I therefore put myself under subjection. I take my body, I put under subjection, lest I. The third thing you have to do is this. To grow spiritually, you have to unlearn. What do you unlearn? Unlearn certain values. 
unless there's some perspective. You know, some guys, every time a girl that's really good walks beside them, they will tap the other guy and say, ooh, Mike, look at that. Ooh, ooh, hoo, hoo. You know, and I'm going to tell you, you have to stop behaving that, that way. Some of you, the only thing that makes you shout is money. You say, ah, man, I got it. But when it's time for prayer, you will just behave as if nothing happened. You're passionate about money and business, but not passionate about the person that gave you life. The reason why is this. You have not learned how to unlearn your values, your perspective, your behavior, or your response. You know, I, I train myself, even though, I'm at home and I'm, even though I'm at home and I'm watching something on television. You know what will happen? If I see something that blesses me on the Word of God, I say, praise God. Oh, my, I, I'm praising God. Even if it's worship, my hands are up. See, I don't just watch the service on television or on the phone or laptop and just go, you know, I'm sipping something. No, sir. This is the time for the Holy Ghost. My spirit, oh, paratatata. My spirit. Spirit is open. My mind is at a lot. I'm expecting something. Right in my house, my hands are up towards heaven. I'm saying, Lord, do what you can do. Holy Ghost, feel me. Did you hear the testimony the other day that as, as the service was going on, there was a man that was struck. This is just three weeks ago. Had stroke on the bed. As, whoever, as the worship was going on, bam, he stood up because faith was released. Glory to God. You have to unlearn. Someone said, I have to unlearn. And I'm saying to you because you can grow as an old Christian and not know you have to unlearn. How do you unlearn? Three things to unlearn. The first thing is this. For you to unlearn, you have to be open. Open means you have to be accessible. And you have to be willing to learn. See, I've met people that want to grow spiritually, but they are so insisting on what they think is right, which is not Scripture. You have to be open. You can't keep saying, ah, this is what I think. What does the Bible say? The second thing you have to do is this. You have to be accountable. You have to be answerable. There should be someone that can watch out for you. And that's what I want to say to you. If you want to grow spiritually, you have to find a way to get to an e-group. An e-group is an online community provided by our church. Send an email and say, I want to be in an e-group today. Because you just need someone that can say, hey, have you prayed today? You know why? Because it's disciples that make disciples. Churches by themselves don't make disciples. Jesus Christ said, go into the world and make disciples because it's disciples that make disciples. You cannot take someone to where you have not been. Oh, so ta ta ta. You cannot take someone to where you have not been. It's when you have been to the deep place of the Spirit, you can talk about the deep place of the Spirit because you've been there. Like Paul says, he said, things that we have touched, Peter said, things we have touched, our hands have humbled. Oh, what is he talking about? He said, of the Word of life, of the Word of life. And the last thing is this. I can teach you the water tomorrow. If you are going to go to the next level spiritually, you have to practice. Why? It's not hearing the word that makes the difference. It's doing the word that makes the difference. I can teach you about prayer from now to next year. Or except you, except you start praying, you don't see the result. I can teach you about the need to give and be generous. Help the poor, tithe and give. Until you begin to tithe and give, you will not be able to go far. Listen to me. The journey of the discipleship it's not in the theoretical learning it's in the practical journey of taking steps listen it, it might be and this is what i tell you if you want to start if you want to start so i want to start being a stronger christian right now this is how you start don't take a big step it can be too big you can collapse just take one small step just say i'll pray i'll, I'll pray for three minutes today i'll read two verses today that's how we start small steps that are consistent are better than big steps that are inconsistent Glory to God. I said glory to God. I'm telling you something. John 15, 2. Jesus Christ said, The tree that bears fruit, the way the Father takes it to the next level, is that He polishes it. He takes some out of it. I want to ask you, is it time for God to take some things out of you? It could be painful, but let it go. Let it go. That relationship that you need to let go. That behavior you have to let go. Their habits you have to let go. Some of you are picking up the wrong thing and God say, let it go. And pick up new habits. What are new habits? New habits of prayer. New habits of passion towards God. You know what passion towards God is? 
You know, some of you just pray and there's no passion. Father, Father. No, sir. Passion towards God is you want to worship God and your, your whole being snows at Oh my God. It's a same you want to jack. You, your hands are towards heaven your, your face leads up oh Lord you're wonderful Lord you are great you're beautiful oh there is none like you as you're praying you're overwhelmed with the passion for the Lord tears streaming down your eyes you're being broken in God's presence and people say what is wrong you say I'm sorry you can understand it because English cannot explain this to you this is deep this is strong that is what it means to be in the presence of God how can you be a husband and you're not challenging your family to pray your kids don't see you pray how can you be a mother and you're not a woman of prayer how can you be a single person all you do is just follow all those young girls all around and you don't know to pursue God stop pursue women pursue God you have rich people that all they have for their wealth is garage and cars that cannot rapturable it's time to say no Lord I want to start building investment in God's kingdom let's pray